AQA, A level physics. This is the engineering option. Uh, first video, moment of inertia. Now, this is what the specification says. Let's dive in. So, first of all, before we look at moment of inertia, consider this F equals MA. If you've got a mass and there's a resultant force on it, then from Newton's second law, it will accelerate. So we have the force, the applied force, the mass of the object, and the acceleration uh, d2x dt squared. Or I could write dv dt, or I could just write a acceleration, linear acceleration. Okay, so a resultant force makes a mass accelerate, and the larger the mass, the smaller the acceleration. So if you like, uh, the mass of an object is how difficult it is to, to make it accelerate. Yeah, the more inertia, this word inertia. Inertia is the unwillingness to, if you've got an object, either moving or not moving, then inertia is how hard it is to change its motion. Yeah, it's linear motion. So the larger the mass, the smaller the acceleration, the mass of an object is how hard it is to, to make it accelerate. Now, moment of inertia is kind of analogous to that. Instead of a, a force, imagine we are applying a torque or a, a moment. Torque as in T-O-R-Q-U-E, a turning force, a torque. Uh, and this torque uh, is applied to this object and it will produce an angular acceleration, d2 theta dt squared. Yeah, it'll turn and produce an angular acceleration or d omega dt, where omega is the angular velocity. Uh, there's also a symbol that we're gonna use later, alpha for angular acceleration. Now, the moment of inertia is basically how hard it is to make this object turn. A resultant force will produce an angular acceleration. The moment of inertia of an object is how hard it is to get an object turning, or if it has a certain angular velocity, how difficult it is when you apply a torque to it to change its angular velocity, either to make it rotate faster or slower. So it's analogous to mass. If you get this slide in your head, everything else is a piece of cake yeah mass of an object how hard it is to accelerate in a straight line moment of inertia of an object how hard it is to accelerate rotationally turning <coughs> excuse me now the moment of inertia of an object will depend on its mass but it also depends on how the mass is distributed a nice little experiment you might do. Imagine you've got a meter ruler and you attach a couple of masses to the meter ruler and then you hold it in the middle and try and turn it. Now, if the masses are close to the axis of rotation, yeah, the line about you turning it, then it's quite easy. If the masses are further away, it, it's a lot harder. So the moment of inertia depends on how the mass is distributed. OK, if the mass is further away from the axis of rotation, then the object has a larger moment of inertia. So it's, it's harder to get turning. OK, so the moment of inertia depends on the mass of the object. It depends on how the mass is distributed. It also depends on what axis we are turning about. In this experiment, we're turning about a central axis. Try holding it somewhere else and try turning it and see what difference it makes. So it depends on the axis that we are turning the object about. This is a, a flywheel. We'll, we'll do a whole video about flywheels later on. But uh, basically a flywheel should have a large moment of inertia. And one way that this is achieved is that most of the mass of the flywheel is as far away from the central axis, the axis of rotation as possible. That gives it a large moment of inertia. 
How do we work out the moment of inertia? Well, if we just had one mass, a point mass, which was a distance r away from the axis, then the moment of inertia is m r squared. So capital I equals m r squared. So it's measured in kilogram meters squared. That's the units of moment of inertia. Now that's for a point mass. Now any object can be thought of as being made up of lots of point masses. So basically you just add together all these little moments of inertia. So the moment of inertia of any object about any axis is I equals sigma m r squared, where m is the mass of each little bit and r is the distance from the axis, okay? Sigma m r squared. Here's the kind of simple question that you might be asked to do. Ignoring the mass of the ruler, uh, calculate the moment of inertia of these objects about the central axis. Uh, I'll let you have a go at it. I'll show you the answer in three, two, one. And there we go. So basically, there's only two masses. So you do m r squared for each mass and then add them together times by two. Uh, you'll notice that both of these objects have the same mass, but the object on the right has a much bigger moment of inertia. It's a lot harder to turn. Oh, that would be obvious if you ever actually did this. Now, more complicated objects like rods and spheres and bars and hoops and things, uh, you'll be given the moment of inertia. Okay, in the question, you'll be told what the moment of inertia is about the particular axis. You can actually if you do an engineering degree, then you'll do the kind of integration to prove these. You don't have to do that, okay? So you'll be given the moment of inertia of a more complicated object. A little summary. Let's make sure we know these. What is meant by the moment of inertia of an object? How is the moment of inertia calculated? What factors affect the moment of inertia of an object. So a little bit of revision, pen and paper, answer these questions. And the answers are three, two, one. Okay, the moment of inertia, a measure of the opposition of an, a body to having its angular velocity changed by an applied torque, which is a very scientific way of saying how hard it is to get an object turning. Yeah, to change the way that it's turning. I would learn that sentence, actually. How is the moment of inertia calculated? We imagine the body to be made up of point masses, a distance r from the axis of rotation, then it's sigma mr squared. It's the sum of all the little mr squareds. What factors does the moment of inertia of an object depend on? Uh, and this little question I've seen on a few past papers, so make sure you learn this. The mass of the object, how the mass is distributed, and the axis that it will be rotated about. 